Live from Joe's mom's basement, it's The Stacking Benjamin Show. I'm Joe's mom's neighbor, Doug, and me and leprechauns have something in common. We're both magically delicious. Today, to celebrate St. Patrick's Day, what would be more fun than talking about life's biggest expenses and how to reduce them? You'll learn lots with our panel. Let's introduce them. Today, we welcome a man who created the greatest military silo turned doomsday bunker, J. Robert Oppenheimer. Nah, he's busy trying to figure out how to light a candle, so we just got Len Penzo. And the woman with a pen that's stronger than a credit card, Paulette Perhatch. Wait, have you guys seen her use her credit cards? She's like Clint Eastwood with those things. And finally, a guy who's bringing at least his C-plus game to this podcast, OG. But that's not all. But wait, there's more. We're going to see who's lucky enough to get my trivia question. And now, a guy who loves to talk economy and blarney, it's Joe O'Sall Sihai. Happy St. Patrick's Day, stackers. I am Joe Saul, C.I. Joe O'Sall Sihai. We're all we're all Irish today, aren't we, Doug? Good day, mate. Uh, <laughs> Swing and a miss from Mr. Uh, O.O.G. Is, is it O.O.G. today? Maybe, there's maybe a, not. There's a Jeff. There's o, a Jeff O-McG. There. O-McG. Yeah. <laughs> at a farm. <laughs> yes. And uh, great day. That just went off the rails. I have no idea where to go from there. What the hell? <laughs> what are we doing? O McG. All right. O McG. Yes. Fantastic. It is uh, St. Patrick's Day on the Stacking Benjamin Show. We're celebrating today with a great time and a great lineup, not just Doug and OG, but today we also have back from the Baja Peninsula, Paulette Perhatch is here, and you just had the trip of a lifetime. I did. Hola. Yeah. 10 days off-roading and driving from San Diego down to Cabo and then back up to Tijuana and out of San Diego again. It was absolutely fantastic. And it was a lot of things I've been working for for a long time coming together, including speaking Spanish. What do you mean by that? A lot of things coming together. Tell me what happened. So being able to go as a reporter on this trip, um, skills I've learned in adventuring and being able to take care of myself out in the kind of place where you need a shovel and not complaining and, you know, being able to be a translator for some of the teams that I wrote with because no one spoke Spanish. Um, learning Spanish was definitely one of the hardest things I've ever done in my life. So I was sending good vibes back to a 26 year old Paulette who was under a pile of flashcards saying one day you're going to be able to you know talk to the lady about her passion fruit margaritas and uh you know convince her to open up so you guys can uh can grab some at the restaurant even though she was thinking about closing so it was super fun all in spanish oh no, in yeah spanish. i did a two-hour interview in spanish i mean like i speak spanish oh, at this holy point. cow yeah yeah so, i've done it yeah, like a, uh, la zapateria <laughs> Wait, man. Um, yeah. And I, it actually inspired me. You know, I think every, every, you know, I was very scared to take this trip and everything you push yourself to do, then you think bigger. And I'm like, I might want to get my translator certificate, you know, and, and do something with that. I don't know. Yeah. But it was awesome. That's cool. Well, from the photos, if you don't follow Paulette on Instagram, you're missing out. Cause that was a ton of fun with, with gray whales and motorcycles and campsites and just look like a great time. Speaking of a great time, you know who else is here? Len Penzo's here, that too. How are you, man? Hey, happy St. Saint- Patty's Day. Uh, I, don't know, I don't know about you, but I'm ready to uh, shamrock and roll. So let's get this shillelagh ah. going. Ah. Ah. <laughs> get this whole, whole shillelagh moving on St. Patty's Day. We're all good to go. Uh, I see that you, you started with the vodka already at uh, 3 in the afternoon Central Time. Yeah, that's a good Irish drink, isn't it? <laughs> the old Irish vodka. Well, for people that are <laughs> for people that are new to the show, every once in a while we have a game show, which is a fantastic way to learn about a topic and have a little fun at the same time. We have a year long competition going on with our uh, contributors here, Paula, OG, and Len, and the game show allows us to double the points on today's show. So one point for the winner of the game show, one point for the winner of today's trivia. And at the same time, 
We're going to learn a little bit about life's biggest expenses. We have a piece here. I'm not going to tell you where it's from until the end. And the rules, guys, for our game show go like this. These are 10 of the biggest expenses you're going to have during your life and how to reduce them. Now, I will tell you, sometimes it's a category of expenses. Sometimes it's a single expense on this. But these are the 10 biggest expenses in life and how to reduce them. I'm going to read from the beginning of this piece so you get a little hint we live in a capitalistic materialistic society the average american citizen will acquire debt before they hit their 20s and keep it for as long as they live a lot of this debt stems from poor decisions and excessive spending but many of life's essential expenses will also drag you out of the black and into the red fortunately there are ways to reduce these costs and potentially save you hundreds of thousands of dollars over your lifetime so Here's the mission. We're going to do three rounds, guys. We'll do round one for a single point, round two for two points, and then the big round three for three points with a few that might be left on this list of the 10 biggest expenses that you will have during your lifetime. Everybody got it? May I ask a follow-up question? Sure. Are are they singular expenses or are they... Sometimes I mean, you they said are category. Ca- so, so a category sometimes they're of, category of expenses ish. They're a type of expense like cigarettes. If it, yes, where if you control this single thing, you will, you will spend both cigarettes money. <laughs> yeah. Well, that Brazilian was Doug's number one, the Brazilian butt lift but there? you'll have to answer that officially to, yeah. uh, to, to decide if it's on the list. Okay. I just saw from Doug's GoFundMe. It seemed like. By the way, on today's list, on today's show, we're going to do this in order of uh, who has the high score will go last because of the fact that it's a little bit harder to go last. So that means the score right now is OG3, Len2, Paulette2. And so Paulette, because you finished third last year, that means you get to go first while all 10 choices are on the board. So first answer for wow. one point, very easy. what's one of life's biggest expenses that we can maybe talk about reducing? Housing. Is housing on the list? Ding, 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 ding. Buying a house is the number two expense, Paulette, of all these expenses. In fact, this particular website says that housing will cost you $226,000 on average. Of course, that's just for one house, right? You might have even more than that. Mm -hmm. They write that a home is the biggest single purchase the average person will make in their lifetime. It's also the most important asset that could make you rich or poor and will improve your credit situation. So, Paulette, what's a way that we can reduce our housing expense? Move from Seattle to Florida. (laughs) Wow, spoken like like somebody with a little knowledge of that situation. (laughs) Yeah, uh, move somewhere with a lower cost of living, have uh, shared housing and roommates or, you know, turn your garage into a little, you know, what do they call it? A little auxiliary housing unit. Yeah. Or, um, you know, just take it down take it down a notch, live somewhere tiny, like my tiny apartment I had in Seattle that one time. OG or Len, you guys have any to add to that? How do we lower our housing expense? The number two expense that we will have during our lifetime. I think I think Paulette nailed it. I, you know, I was going to say, yeah, buy a smaller home. I know that's what I did. I I've bought. Uh, I have a relatively small home. Uh, it's it's. Uh, just barely 2000 square feet. I, I see a lot of people these days, even with their just, they might have one child or no children at all. And they have these 3000, 4000 square foot homes. And it's just a lot of, I, you know, that's a lot of extra, you're paying by the square foot, you know, when you, when you buy that house and uh, you know, it just, it just jacks up the price. So uh, it's, and then it also, it's nice there's to have so a small many, like- home. So many things ripple out from that, like the lawn care, like yes. getting it cleaned is more expensive. If you want to have a cleaner, taxes, the like heating. Just so many, <laughs> mm-hmm, so many things yep. that, that yep. ripple out from that. Yep. Yep. Yeah. I feel it, like I'm going to fail this. <laughs> Do you have one, OG? Oh, I, I mean, about the house stuff. I mean, yeah. What Paulette said, obviously reduce your housing expenses by being a little bit smarter. I I was thinking about it in terms of the money aspect of it too. 
you know, part of the cost associated with buying a house is the fact that you got to pay three or four times the cost of it to the bank to own it. And so the, the, the mm. faster that you can shorten that period down, the, the more money you're not paying to, to the bank, that's the more money that's in your pocket. It doesn't seem that way because you have to pay a higher payment, right? If you go from 30 to 15 year mortgage or you pay extra on your house or something like that, it doesn't seem like you're saving money. But in the, in the grand scheme of your entire life, when you go to get that mortgage and that box says, this is your total payments, you know, and it's got two commas in it, you know, you want to, most of that's interest in the bank. Right. Yeah, I was going to say, not, not this very minute, but there are a lot of times when you should look into refinancing mm-hmm. and, and reducing your rate. I mean, may not be right now, but if you just had to buy a house in the last six to eight months, in 18 to maybe 36 months from now, there's a chance that you can drop a point or two potentially. Yeah, yeah that can be a long, a long ways, Doug. I mean, I, I bought it, you know, the older you get, the more, the, and if the rates are high, you can really do a lot of savings. Uh, you know, I remember my, my payment on this house when I first bought it was 1400 bucks. It was like, I think the interest rate was 8%, 7%, you know, and, and over time I got that down to uh gosh, I think I, the last interest, my, my last refi was 2.75%. So, uh, you know, I, that, bring, that brought the, the, um, that brought the uh, payment down to 480 bucks. So, and of course you're paying over time too, especially if you're making extra payments and you're bringing down that principal, it really, it really does snowball the savings over time. So like right now when we have interest rates are higher, you know, it's, it's okay. I know a lot of people are lamenting the high interest rates for their mortgages, but you can refinance. That's, you know, I'd almost rather buy a house at a high interest rate and refinance down and then buy at a higher, at a lower cost. I guess it's a, it'd be about the same cost because you're buying payments than overpaying for a house with a lower interest rate. I, I think you have, you actually have yeah, more the total, flexibility the, the other the total, direction. The total cost is going to be probably more by buying too big of a house with a lower interest rate yeah. versus being smarter about your decision-making now and then, and then buying down the rate, so to speak, as, as you're able to make better decisions on the, the money aspect of it. Yes. Lennon, having been to your house a couple times, you know, your home reminds me of a, a book that became a bestseller on architecture called The Not So Big House, which I'd encourage everybody to read because it is just it is a really cool way to look at housing and the fact that that this dollar per square foot measurement that we use in real estate is so flawed and you can get a much more comfortable house. And if you focus more on a comfortable house than on a big house with a bunch of unusable space, you're going to make lots better decisions because your house lens is awesome. And it's, it's oh, a you. quality, very comfortable place to live. Like a great place to great. And place I use, to I use all the rooms. I use all the rooms. Like I, I do have friends with big houses and they, I know they have rooms. They never even, they don't use them for anything other than storage, you know? So, you know, I, it makes you wonder, well, why did you buy this huge house? You know? Yep. Uh, Len, while you're up, so Paulette takes the early lead with one. Let's see if you can tie her here in the first round. Yeah. What's another of the nine that are left on this list of big expenses? Gosh, there's one more than housing. That's interesting. I think I know what the answer is, but I I think I'm going to go for the low. I think it might be tricky too. the, the one, the answer, the number one is that maybe people aren't thinking. I'm going to leave that. I'm going to, I'm going to guess that OG or Paulette won't come up with it. So I'm going to go something I think is a little more obvious. I'm going to say college. Is it, is college on the list? Ding, 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 ding. College is the number eight expense. Ooh, I, on I this just made list. it. Wow. Really? That's number eight. Okay. Eighth most expensive. Uh, they write about college. A college education is expensive. There we go. It's why the average American has non-mortgage debt of nearly $40,000 and why many young adults have masses of debt before they even secure their first full-time job. However, it's also considered a form of good debt, they say, as it can potentially increase your net worth. A few years ago, a study by Georgetown University found a college graduate earns $1 million more than their non-college educated counterparts throughout their lifetimes. Let's talk about this. How do we reduce the cost of college, Len? One way to do it is if you can some some degrees can be got gotten at, at a place as, as low as like a community college. Um, my daughter, who's uh, in school right now to be a vet tech, is she's uh, two months away from getting it. She's she, 
her degree is actually you get it at a community college. Um, if if you can't get the degree at the community college and you have to go a little higher up, you can go to, say, a state college rather than a, you know, a more of a what is it? Uh, higher university like in California, the California state colleges are, are cheaper than the University of California. And then, of course, you know, avoid the those Ivy League schools, those private schools are way more expensive, too. So so there are, quote, quote, bargain colleges. I, I think one of the most important things, though, everybody should do, and I don't think they do it, is get make sure you check your return on investment for any degree you're going after. Uh, look at the look at your income over your career and then compare that to the amount of you're going to pay for that degree and uh, check your payback period and make sure you have a payback period that's relatively short. So before you jump into college, because there are other alternatives and that's not go to, going to college. Maybe you go to a trade school or trade. You know, I know there's yeah. plumbers and electricians and carpenters making six figures easy these days. So that's something I was excited. I was excited. Like my nephew uh, is in the Navy right now and gets out in a year. And I asked and I was going to to re up because he really enjoys it. He says, no, he's going to use what he's learned in the Navy to become a plumber. He's yep. going to immediately go into plumbing and man, what a job he's got waiting for him. Yeah. Uh, mechanics, said, mechanics, a, another one. That's another great uh, vocational job that pays. Well. I'll agree with you, except for this. I think if you're not going into debt, if you have a way to do it, like sometimes the ROI in college is I want to be a better human or I want to be a, you know what I mean? I want a fuller life. If you're going into debt to go to college, well then that's, that would be a problem. Uh, because the ROI might not be there. Right. But if you're not, there's some people that go to college for different reasons, but certainly if it's to get a job after, after you, you graduate, well then I think the ROI is super important. OG, a way to, a way to make college cheaper on top of what Len mentioned. Yeah. I, I'm going to look at this again from the money aspect of it. And if you start saving a hundred dollars a month per year of school, so $400 a month, from the time your kid's born till, till, till 18, you'll be able to accumulate somewhere in the neighborhood of about 200 or $215,000 that could be used for college. That maybe gives you all the money you need for a state school, or maybe it gives you half the money you need for Harvard. I don't know, but, but you're going to save a boatload of money in exchange for $86,000 of cost. So your $400 a month for 18 years is 86,000 but use the power of compounding to turn it into 200 and something thousand. So you've gotten that extra 120, $130,000 of extra money, extra tuition for nothing, just by saving 400 bucks into your college fund. So um, early and often that, that that's, yeah. that's how you, that's how you lower the cost. It, not that 86,000 is not a lot of money. That's a whole bunch, but in the, in, in the comparison against, the, what, what, what you have uh, instead on the back end. That ties it up. Well, actually, one more thing, Len, to, to add on to what you said. Also, not just trade schools, but a lot of the time, you know, a great friend of mine spent his first two years uh, uh, at a community college just getting getting those those, you know, those huge credits where where you've got a room with 100 people in it instead, a smaller classroom. Uh, uh, much, much lower cost per credit hour. That works as well. Yeah, as that's well. a great, I forgot. That's a great idea. I, I, a lot of people, and I did that myself, um, do your general ed at the community colleges if you can, as long as the, the, the credits transfer over to the next, if you want to go up to the, to the bigger school. Yeah, that, that's one, another great idea. So the score now, Paulette with one, Lem with one, OG, we got eight left on the board. What's a big cost of living that we can maybe try to make less expensive? Golly, um, both of those were, were on my list, so it's dwindling down quite a bit. Uh, I'm going to go with uh, health care is a big cost throughout one's life. Is health care healthcare on the list? Ding, 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 ding. It is on the list. We're going to allow it, Doug, because it's care. actually, it is number five. 
because when he talks about health care, it's, right. it's it's buying insurances insurance. is on the list. Okay. okay. Buying and so we're going to widen this and uh, the judges are Ooh. okaying that That's one. That's probably proof. I'd give you judging, that. Absolutely. Joe. <laughs> but, well, but Len, to your five. point, that's not number one. You thought I'm that was shocked. number one, Len? I thought it was number one for sure. I thought it was yeah. number one. I, I was going to hold off on that one. That, that's I didn't think anybody, but for some reason, I just thought everybody else would overlook it. I thought that was number one. Okay, so it shows you what I know. I have a clue to what number one is, but as nope. soon as I say it. No. Can't do it. Can't, Don't can't do it. Uh, uh, now, not just your 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 health insurance, but also yeah. when we look at your car insurance, your homeowner's insurance, your life insurance, disability over the course of your life, buying insurances is just a ton of money. In fact, I think they underestimate this, Doug, that on this list that you and I yeah. can see that they can. It says fifty thousand dollars. I think there are several that, that is, are underestimated, oh. but this one is considerable. Over your lifetime? Oh my God! Yes. That's, well, that's, that's way that's way cheap. Yeah. Grossly, are you kidding? Grossly me? low. Oh, I know, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I just did. I I was just doing it for me. It was twenty grand for me and the wife. Looking at for me and the wife. It was if I didn't have my my company health care, which you know I wouldn't have retired without it. But it was I was looking at twenty thousand bucks for me me and the honeybee a year for for health insurance. Yes. But look at how how healthy you are, Len. Fifty. Huh? I mean, in your look at how unhealthy you are in your (laughs) age. The box of cigars every day is not helping, Len. <laughs> might, Thanks, Joe. Might not Thanks, do it. Doug. <laughs> oh, gee, let's lower the cost of all your insurances. What's a good tip for our stacker community to lower their insurance cost? Well, I mean, I'm going through this right now. We got our we got our uh, renewal home and car insurance. It's it's up in a few weeks, and it was just a small increase of roughly 350 percent. So, um, so yeah, how about no <laughs> shopping? So, so you definitely have to shop around. You got to make sure you got the right coverage, right? I mean, you can't just, yeah. you can't, can't just go to, you know, whatever the state minimum is. That's not going to solve your problem if something bad happens. But, but, um, you know, I, I mean, I would have noticed that, but I, but I, but you know, a lot of times the payments are on auto pay or, or it comes out of your mortgage, you know, your house insurance, it's, it's just part of your escrow and you just. And they go, oh, escrow went up. You know, you got to pay an extra hundred bucks this month. You know, you just kind of let it go. But you have, you should, you should shop around for those sorts of things. And uh, and 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 on the health insurance side of things, which we also pay a boatload of money for because of the company, um, uh, just being healthy, like making smart health decisions, will help lower those help lower those costs because you'll spend less time in. Uh, you know, at doctor's offices and tests and all that other sort of stuff as best you can, can't avoid accidents, but, um, um, but then that'll help, you know, your rating as time goes do you, on. Do you work for a really crappy employer? OG who doesn't pay much for your health insurance. <laughs> one of them, that why it's so expensive? <laughs> one of them, one of my employers pays almost nothing next to nothing. As a matter of fact, the benefits package is awful. Look at look at the time we got to move. <laughs> Uh, and then I've and then I've got one more too, uh, yes. somewhat overlooked that's tied to this, which is your credit score. More often than not, insurance companies are are running a credit report, and they've got some data to support. Bad credit people tend to have higher claims, although I can't seem to think how that checks, but apparently it does. Or it's just a way to like screw people who have crappy credit, which could be the case also. But um, but the, I do know that the higher credit you have, the better your insurance rates will be. So if you keep your credit in check. You're, Back uh, to shopping and the fact that a lot of these things are on autopilot, right? I mean, we've we've talked about uh, uh, checking your subscriptions from time to time, going through your bank statements, finding out what what things are automatically coming out of your bank account. The insurance is doing that often means that we don't check. And I've had insurance agents tell me, OG, to your point that it, check after your birthday, because often companies, companies like people that are between age X and age Y, and you may move out of that band and through no fault uh, of your own besides aging, it might be more about who the insurance the is targeting. Yeah, maybe that's the old. reason. Or, so not. Or, or, or my son that drove the car through the living room. But I don't think what that's those, I, one of those I two think, things were the reason like driving a car through your, the wall of your house has anything to do with your premium going up. Yeah, I don't know. Why would that, Maybe. Why would that I'm have not sure. to do that. Paul letter Len, you guys have any other tips on top of OGs to save money on your insurances? You know, I, uh, I found out that there, there are, um, like 
through health insurance, they often have people who will like brokers who will help you think through it. So. On a live event we had on Fireside uh, a couple months ago, and this guy brought so much knowledge and saved people that were their lives so much money. And what do we do with insurances? We immediately avoid humans now. We meet with, ah, I don't want to talk to somebody. I'm going to go ahead and, but, but once we got mm. him chatting and he knew what he was talking about, mm -hmm. he could save people tons of money. So having a qualified person, I like that. Len, how about you? Yeah, I want to, well, I want to echo the broker. We have a broker. Uh, mm. She's done a great job always finding us the cheapest insurance. She sends us a Christmas card every year. Uh, but uh, before we had the, before we had the broker, I found that, I, well, of course, and of course, you can always write uh, raise deductibles. That's an easy one too to lower your uh, lower your premiums. But I also found that uh, without the broker, about every three years or so, uh, it was good to just switch companies because uh, it seems like these other your com your competitive your competing insurance companies wanted your business and they would give you a really good deal if you switched over to a completely new company every couple of years. Once you stayed with a company for a long time. They, they tend to not give you those breaks anymore. That that was what I found anyways. But my, I think well, like I think, Paul had said, the broker is just, I think that's the way to go. Get your insurance through broker. Because insurances, Len, are required to insure a swath of people. They're not allowed to discriminate against the Penzo family, although I would. I mean, if it were me, but <laughs> but they're not because oh, sure. because they're not <laughs> because they're not allowed to. I think it's the birthday thing. I think it's the fact that you move out of the target market during that three year period. That is why is why that uh, that maybe but but there's always another there was always another company that just came in, you know, after a few years, ridiculously under what I was paying at the old company. And yeah. I was like, yeah. wow, you know, well, why, and, uh, you and, know, and the, and the reason for that, Len, is because uh, kind of what Joe's saying is they have to diversify that that pool. Right. They can't. If, if they go, well, we've got a whole bunch of people in San Diego, but we don't have enough in L.A. We need to even this out. They'll run incentive incentive yeah. pricing to kind of even that risk pool out, um, and and then on the broker side of things, they'll also incentivize the brokers to say, hey, you know, kind of throw us some throw us some new business, and we'll give you a free trip to Cabo, you know, or something. But um, which is, you know, it is what it is. It's fine as long as you get a good deal out of it, I suppose. But um, uh, to Joe's point, they can't really discriminate based on being Len Penzo. Uh, that is the oh, end of our first round. Let's review the score. Paulette has won. Len has won. OG has won. We're going to double the stakes in round two. Paulette, your second guess. We now have seven of them left on the board. Yeah. What appears in this piece is one of the big cost of living that we can reduce. I'm going to say... I don't know if this will, what if it's like, what if I guess something, but it doesn't count because it's hard to say if it's like an <laughs> That would be a wrong answer. <laughs> then you wrong. <laughs> yes. All right, I'm going to say, I'm going to say food. I'm going to say human food. Does food costs make the top 10 list? Bum, bum, bum. What? Bum, bum. Which is interesting really? because when we talk, you know, all the time we say we your three biggest list. expenses, right? Your three biggest expenses are home. These guys have it as number two. What if this is trash? Another one that may or may not be on here. Uh, and your third one, which is groceries. Grocery bills don't make Do we know this, this list is not list. trash? We well, the fun thing about baseball is trash.com. <laughs> so, <laughs> the fun thing I like about our that. game shows is that often... People like you bring up these expenses that should be on these mm -hmm. lists. A lot of times these lists we work from our mm -hmm. trash, but the only thing we play from is, is it on the list? And it is not. Okay. But, but food costs, certainly for a lot of us, we think it's in the top three. Uh, Len, you've done a lot of pieces on controlling your food costs. In fact, you do those taste tests I'm never invited to. <laughs> I, you know what, what? what? The next we've got to get together and uh, somehow uh, we've got to get the gang together here. All of us, uh, the whole crew, oh, yes. producers, everybody and and uh, and do a taste. And we got to figure out a way to, to, to get make that work. So uh, but yes, right. my, te my, my the taste my taste tests. OK, yeah, you name it. I'm you, you guys coming to, expert you guys come into Southern Cal <laughs> whenever the lasagna is being made. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> hey, but, 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 but no, seriously. 
But, but, but seriously, the, the, those taste, taste tests have shown many, many times the blind taste test that, that you can save a lot of money by going with the store brand. And, and it tastes mm-hmm. just as good, if not better. So, so in our house, we have the blind taste test of water. My kids swear by the fact that they can tell the difference between fridge water and tap water. And I'm like, you cannot tell the difference mm-hmm. between fridge water and tap water. And they're like, yes, I can. And so I actually did done that. I did that challenge. Have you? <laughs> yes. Both of my, both of my boys and my wife, you could have 25 glasses in a row that are mixed up and they would, they would go 25 and 0 every single time we've done. I'm like, no. And I'll put like, I'll do three of them, but they're all tap water. Go, which one's the, which one's the fridge water? Ha uh-huh. ha. Which one is it? They'll go, they'll go. None of them. I mean, they know it. it I, I don't, I don't get it. So it's got to come out of the fridge. At least they didn't pick Evian or, Perrier or something. VG. But VG. Yes. That's let's mine. lower some let's lower some food costs because Paulette, I think that that belongs on the list. Hmm. Man, for me, for me, meal prepping was a big one. How about for you? Oh yeah, I'm a huge like uh bulk cooker. Like I have so much Tupperware and I cook when I cook, I cook a meal usually like double or triple the recipe and then freeze a bunch because when I'm in the mood to cook, like I'm in the mood to cook. And then when I'm running around running my freelance business and stuff, I just want to grab something out of the freezer often. And that is really great for me. And then also going vegetarian or vegan is great. Oh, one star. Can't do that. (laughs) I am am a mostly vegetarian (laughs) eater. Like I love steak. I love like, but I probably 70 to 75% of my meals are vegetarian. We had, what is it, Doug, you okay? mostly vegetarian, but I love steak. I love chicken. You do. It's not about. Disgusting. No, listen, it is not about the ethics. It's about the environment, the cost, and my health. So if you can 75% have vegetarian meals, then that's fine. I'm not, it's not a label on myself that like I am a vegetarian. It's I eat vegetarian about 75% of the time. So many people say that, and yet I find myself to... Not able to resist the uh, lure of the hamburger with regular meat it's on it. It's delicious. Haven't been able to haven't been able to do that yet. Uh, let's move on, Len. Your second pick. Oh, well, let's see. I didn't have food on the list. Uh, okay. Now I'm going to say. Well. I don't know if you can you can you hear that honking in the background a little bit. Uh, I'm going to say I, I I'm going to uh, I don't know somehow or another this is probably going to backfire on me. I'm going to say uh, automobile is automobile on the list. Ding 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 ding. Oh, it is yes. That is the number seven expense yeah. on this list. In fact, uh, it says Americans spend close to $35,000 on new cars, around 90% of which is finance. There's a huge debt for anyone yeah. to bear. And while it does provide a sizable asset, it's an, it's an asset that rapidly depreciates. Uh, Len, how do we make a better car buying decision that will save us some money? Well, the the key word there you said was depre- depreciates. It's like I, I don't know what it is. It was does a car lose thirty or forty percent of its value as soon as you drive it off the lot? You might be better off if buying a car that's two years old, um, and you can probably save a lot of money. I know my dad used to do that when I was a kid. He'd always buy a one or two year old car and then he'd keep it for twenty years. You know, and uh, that and so he, your dad bought one car when you were a kid. What's that? <laughs> Uh, he'd buy two cars. Well, you're like, my dad used to do this, you know, like intimating that he was doing it all the time. Yeah, he did this well, all the was, time. Was, like we, he, had mul- we, had, we had multiple cars, right? We had one oh, for my mom and we had one oh, for we had one for my dad, right? So that's two cars. But uh, yeah. Len yeah. lives so, at home until six years ago. So, <laughs> well, that's <true. laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's how yeah. we save money on housing right there. Yes. Yes. Forget the smaller house. He just lived with mom. Uh, uh, Paulette saving money on cars. Yeah. Um, well now that I'm have gone off roading and I need a brand new Bronco, I'm not going to be much help here, but, um, you know, I just think really sticking with what you, what you actually need and trying to, to question, like if there's ego around your car and, and checking your ego there, like I've definitely driven some crappy cars and I think people have a lot of ego around their car and it's like, what do you really need? 
to get around rather than is this like a representation of your personality and who you are? I mean, we all joke about the $50,000 loud truck with the freaking fart can on the back. We're like, you know, it's it's very transparent and very expensive form of ego boost. It's it is it is lucky for you that you got into uh, into the Baja thing and off roading thing versus I'm a Formula One fan. Like I'm looking for the used McLaren. <laughs> how, how, how do I get the Ferrari at a lower expense? You That's, know, I like that. I, I, I like need... that Paulette pointed out the whole ego attachment to our cars. I think maybe we should all take a lesson from Hollywood and we could all drive Priuses and then just have a jet parked off to mm -hmm. the side and then we can fly the jet around. But when you're around town, you look like you have a low ego and you're just driving <laughs> like a little tiny fuel efficient car. But well, these are all like arrows pointed at me. Every, every one of these is like <laughs> housing costs and cars. Just, and... just sa save. Uh, I won't ask you then. Mm -hmm. OG, or do you got yeah, one for know. us? Yeah, no, no, the, uh, no I mean, just say, by use, just, just, just by used. You know, unless it's recently, the last couple of years buying used was not a great idea. But um, um, again, I'm just going back to the to the to the interest component of it. So, all right, Len takes the lead now with uh, three points. Oh, gee, can you tie him before we go into the break? We're running out of options. Uh, could you remind the audience what numbers are still available on the list? Yes, I can. We have number 10, 9, 6, 4, 3, and 1 are still on the list. What is it? 10, 9, 6, 4, 3, 1. 3 and 1. Gosh. Gotcha. Um, we, food wasn't one. Golly. I know. I, I this know. Maybe you just have to count. Maybe food's not a... Maybe that person doesn't eat food. There are two um, on this list that I think are BS. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna throw one out there. Uh, I'm gonna go daycare expenses or childcare expenses of some kind. Is child expenses on the list? Ding 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 ding. That is the Rascal. number one expense oh, on this entire well, yeah. list because yeah. that's under the umbrella of raising a child. Yeah, the raising most expensive okay. thing this list says you can do is to raise a child. A child can cost close to a quarter of a million dollars from birth to age 17. I think my kid ate that by the time he was six. Yeah, that's <laughs> uh, You pay extra for housing, utilities, food, clothing, and health care, and you also have to factor daycare and education in the mix. So raising a child the number one expense they have here. $233,000 I mean, just... is how much it costs to sign your kid up for a travel soccer team now. Right? Yeah, yeah, that's true. I mean, well, I mean, what, what, wasn't one of the things like 50,000 or oh, the insurance they said was $50,000. I know people that spend $25,000 a year on daycare for, for, for the oh, first easy. four, three, four, five years of a kid's life. And then if you have we two, were doing that 20 years ago. That. Yeah. yeah so I mean, easy. that number's, Daycare so, oh, gee, how do we how do we lower the cost of raising a kid? Do you get say to, get stop the two? <laughs> yeah, get them to work. I call them my little Ferraris, um, <laughs> <laughs> but that's not not that far off, I guess. I mean, all of the things that we've talked about so far, you know, we can apply to the context of of child raising, which is, you know, do, do all the kids need bedrooms? Can they? Have can they share a bedroom? Do they all need their own bathrooms? Can they share a bathroom? Do you have to have the seven person SUV or can a four person sedan be okay? You know, like right on all, the top. Yes. Can you tie one in the trunk? You know, pop the trunk when they get to school and little little Johnny runs out like see on see it's three o'clock. You know, all sorts. And of here comes the here comes, here comes the, the child protection man. services. I was, <laughs> I was kidding. Coming to take uh, kids away. Yeah. Oh, that's uh, a, that's an option. See, having <laughs> no, that is not. having the state having your children having the state take the care state. of some of them for a period of time. You can kind of, sort of, for sure, get them back. Not, not, too far. not, not maybe not an option. Leonard Paulette, ideas to uh, lower the cost of raising children. Well, I think that you know really going you for like used things and keeping it very low key when they're too they young used kids used kids going for used, by, <laughs> get yeah, used like ones. Buying, you know it's like i think of like liz frugal woods and like buying things secondhand you know yeah. before they're yeah. old enough to know any different um is a great idea 
and also not having them. Len- That's my, my my best. <laughs> Len, how about you? You know what? I <laughs> I really don't know. Just have less of them, I guess. I um, yeah, same as I, I, you know. Uh, to me, I uh, gosh, I don't even. Uh, I I, I, lo- I think kids are great, and I don't even think that should. I mean, that's just the cost is the cost, and that's something something you shouldn't worry about. I wish I had, you know, I've, I've told, I've told my, I've told my family, I wish sometimes I wish, I wish we had three kids. I, we purposely stopped it too for, you know, because of the cost, but, but I wish boy, we had, if more, I had to yeah. do it over again. I, I would have another one for sure. Five or six of them. Oh, Absolutely. not yeah. me. I mean, if you I plan- could, I'd have 10. I really would if I could. <laughs> yeah. I have a friend that has 11 kids. Try to have kids. We planned on having one and ended up with twins. So there you, there you go. Uh There it is. All right. At the end of the first two rounds, we got one round to go after our break for our famous trivia contest. The score Paulette has one Len and OG both have three. You know what? The third round is going to be three points. So everybody's still in it. We're going to have that next. However, before we do that, time to score another point, which is uh, every Friday on this show, we have a trivia contest between our three contributors here. And I love it when they all get together because, well, so far we've got OG with three points, Len with two, Paulette with two. And I love the head to head competition, which we get about once every six weeks. So here it is, Warriors. Uh, Our trivia question for today, Doug, what's on tap? Hey there, stackers. I'm Joe's mom's neighbor, Doug. And gotta say, learning is way more fun when you've got a pint in your hand. Wish my (laughs) teachers didn't put the kibosh on that for me in the sixth grade. Oh, relax, people. It was probably Capri Sun. (laughs) Look, I know who may have started that no drinking in school tradition. Today in history, Joseph Lloyd, an Irishman, was the first school teacher in Cincinnati, establishing a log cabin near Sycamore Street. The question is, in what year did he establish that school? I'll be right back after I try to get this green dye out of my eyebrows. Uh, so the reason why we have Cincinnati trivia today is while while you are off celebrating St. Patrick's Day. I'm celebrating it as well, but I'm not just doing this. I'm also at the Economy Conference in Cincinnati. So we're celebrating Cincinnati, celebrating St. Patrick's Day and the fact that uh, a lot of a lot of Irish people settled Cincinnati, which I didn't know, Doug, until we researched this this trivia. Question. Until you went to all the bars. Until I went to, I made sure to study, which is probably what I'm doing while everybody's listening to this at 6 a.m. on Friday morning. But Paulette, you Get to go last. Len goes second. OG, you're kicking us off, man. In Cincinnati, what year did Joseph Lloyd establish the first school in Cincinnati? First school in Cincinnati. I mean, probably before 1940, World War II time. Um. Is this a private school? Uh, what kind of school? It, it was a log a cabin school? regular school. It was the school. first TV repair school, Len. What do you mean, what kind of school? <laughs> well, I mean, is it a pu- is it, it I don't know. Is it, is it like a college or was it like a first one it was an elementary C school? Or plus, plus, plus. It, was a, it was a log cabin <laughs> primary school, like, a, like an elementary K through 12 kind of school. Um. I'm going to say uh, that the answer is probably somewhere in the neighborhood of 1784. 1784. Columbus sailed the ocean floor. That's how you remember that. 1784. And, uh, and a rhyme that may or may not work. Len, how about you? What do you think of that guess? 1784. I, you know, I don't know. Uh, log cabin. Let's see. Was Abe Lincoln was born in a log cabin? Let's see. So log cabins. So that was probably Illinois in the 
When did they invent 1800? When, when were logs created? Yeah. Circa no. Well, let's see. Ohio was, I think Ohio was the 14th state. I think it was the first state after the 13 colonies. Uh, so probably, and, you, and to be a state, you had to have a population, a pretty, you know, uh, some minimum population. Um, so it was probably in the late 1700s or the early 1800s. I'm going to say 17. I don't want to get sandwiched too badly. I'll say 1799. 1799, the day Columbus did dine, to use uh, Ochi's <laughs> analogy. I have no idea. Paulette, that's quite a field goal you got there. It is. Which way do I go on either side? Uh, first school. But it's Cincinnati. Dang. Something tells me it's earlier, but something tells me it might be later. Something tells me it's in the middle. No. I doubt <laughs> it. Uh oh. You've got all of the expanse of history below. I do. Logs. All of Cabins. the expanse of present history. Schools. I'm going to go. I'm going to go 1800, but I feel like it might be earlier. Ah, such an emotional roller coaster. Are you doing it? <laughs> doing you it. locking that in? I'm doing it, locking it in. I'm in a glass case of emotion. 1800. <laughs> 1784, 1799, 1800. Who's right? We'll find out in just a minute. Oh, gee, you kicked this off with 1784. You feeling good? I mean, I'm, 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 I'm going with the fact that there were probably people there who wanted to go to school that early. I don't know. You know, I, 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 cause I thought about the statehood and all that stuff, but I thought there were schools before there were states. So that's how I picked it. Len, you in a state of feeling good about this guess? No, I, I have no clue. I have no, <laughs> no, no clue whatsoever. And Paulette, 1800, if it was it. 1940, and good. now she feels horrible about it. Well, let's see if you were, <laughs> let's see who's such feeling a right on. It's such a softball. I, I don't know. Doug, Doug, what have you got? Hey there, stackers. I'm corned beef eating and jig dancing Joe's mom's neighbor, Doug. The Irish have a long tradition in Cincinnati, so of course, Joe's magically there at economy while he's simultaneously here with us. So what year did Irishman Joseph Lloyd start teaching in Cincinnati? Lucky for you, I got the answer. First of all, Len, you were wrong twice in this because Vermont was the 14th state. Ohio was, I believe, the 17th state. But, you know, you're in the range. Uh, we have uh, Paulette, who was just nine years off with her guess of 1800, and Len, who was eight years off, and OG, who was seven years wow. off with his guess. Leading us, if you've done the trigonometry by now, you know the answer is 1791, and OG is our winner. I'm impressed. I would have said, so like, bad. 1300 if I hadn't had and that Paulette, And Paulette... I gave it to you. I said, what if it's in between? <laughs> what if it's in between? I, I tried. You did try. I, uh, I tried. I'm, I'm a helper. Good helping. You're welcome. Sure. Yes. Sweet. Go team. All right. Man. And that uh, means that next week things are going to get interesting. OG now has four lent to Paulette to. But you know what? It's actually going to get interesting before that because Paulette or Len could get that point right back. I can feel the tension as we go to the final round of our game. I got uninvited from Len's uh, lasagna tasting. I could tell <laughs> just the just the look. <laughs> it just well, I lost by one. That that one stung. That one stung. Here we go. We're on the final round. This is for three points. We still have six on the board, or five on the board, rather. The number 10, 9, 6, 4, and 3 answers are left. Paulette with a chance to take the lead with three points. This will give you four while Len and OG have three. What's at expense? One of the biggest categories of expenses. All right. I'm going to say this, but I'm really scared it's not included, and I'm going to be mad. Um retirement is retirement an expense on this list 
You better say yes, because she's going to be really mad. I'm going to slam this computer closed <laughs> if it's not. I want to say yes, because based on all the other stuff, Doug, that we talked about, it should be on this list. It is not. This list sucks ass. Come on. It is not <laughs> kind of on does. this on this. You no, know, Paulette, you're taking my role. Usually I'm the one that's picking up, I think, good answers, and they're not on there. So thank you for taking over I, for me this time. This is trash. Yeah, Paulette really got hosed this time. That, that's a, based on what, the ones that, wait till you see what's on this. What is it, toenail clippers? But, but yes, toenail clippers. No. Number uh, 1.5. <laughs> making retirement less expensive. How do we how do we optimize our retirement? I think we talk about that a lot here, so I think we'll let that one go because so many ways that we talk about every day on on this show. Let's go into though, Len, for a oh, chance to take the lead here. I'm I to me this is so obvious, but something tells me, you know, it could not it might not be on there, but to me, it's oh. Why? Just because retirement wasn't on there? Well, or groceries, which everybody says is number I, here, three. I'm gonna. The, to me, this is obvious, but uh, I can see lots of ways around this where they'd say no, that's not true. I'm gonna say weddings. Does weddings make the list? Ding 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 ding. Yeah. Weddings is the number nine. Oh, I snuck in there. <laughs> I'll take Len it. owns the bottom of this list. Yeah, well, that's all right. <laughs> Len bottom feeding. Uh, they write, weddings are one of the biggest expenses that don't increase your net worth. It's an expense used to celebrate togetherness and to create memories that ostensibly will remain with your guests forever. In actual fact, average adult attends three weddings a year. No matter how much money you invest in making your special, your guests will struggle to differentiate it from those other weddings mm. in 2010 or even five years years uh len you think that's true does that feel true uh yeah well uh, look i weddings can be uh, people i've seen people waste so much money to me it's it's for one day it's a big waste of money i i, mm -hmm. I think it's absolutely crazy you know i it, i'm going to give my daughter for example i'm going to say hey i'll expend for your wedding if you want you can have this you know or I can give you the money and you can put it toward a down payment towards a house or whatever. I'd rather you do that than blow it all on one day, you know, for, but that's just me. Um, I'm sure there's a lot of, especially there's a lot of people out there that disagree <laughs> and think it's a big special day that's worth, you know, spending tons of money on. I'm not one of those people. I used to, I used to yet lend to your point when I was a financial planner and clients would tell me that their child was getting married. I would tell them to do the preemptive strike to tell them how much money they were giving to the wedding period. This is, this is, Hey, congratulations. Here's my contribution before you got sucked into the drama of everything's just a little more expensive mm -hmm. than they want it to be. And it's not their money. So mm -hmm. do the mm -hmm. preemptive strike move. Uh, OG, what's a way to lower wedding costs? <laughs> um, <laughs> what do you mean? Let's talk, He's let's like, talk no. to OG about saving money. Um, He's like, I do have that either. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Ah, geez. Saving money on weddings. I mean, just don't have it be a big giant party. Like we had, we went to a wedding, uh, of a friend of mine who could, have could have done it like all, you know, done it all up, but, but it, it just, it was like a, it was like a fun backyard party at a nice place, but not the Ritz Carlton. And the food was barbecue instead of you know, whatever plated tenderloin medallions or something. And it was every bit as fun by having those, yeah. you know, second tier air quotes th things than, uh, than, than a big old party at a fancy hotel or something. Yeah. But you know what? Oh, so oh, gee, friends of mine went the exact opposite way and had a wonderful wedding, uh, where they, they, they had it at a beautiful inn. They had phenomenal food, first class stuff, but they limited, the, they did the opposite. They limited the guest list of 40 people. Oh, oh there's a way to go. That wouldn't work well for me. Cause I'm usually not in the top 40 of anybody's list, but, um, <laughs> so I wouldn't have anything to do all summer, but I understand that could be a way for, but, but I kind of, I like that line of reasoning, OG. Now, in hindsight, I had a brother. So we got married in the early 90s when the big weddings were still all the rage. Everybody wanted to try to max out their 
the wedding because I'm a princess or, you know, <laughs> and, so I, and my, I had a brother who said, just have a pig roast and get a great band and have a great time. And, and we scoffed at that and thought, oh, that's just, that's such a Kevin thing to say because he was all about the party. But now in hindsight, what do we remember? We remember the people that were there. We remember the great band because we did have a sweet band and that's it. We don't remember the food we had. We don't remember the cake. We don't remember the flowers that were on the table. None of that matters. Just have an event or a venue that promotes great socialization and a great time. That's what you're going to remember 10 years later. Paulette, way, way to lower the cost. Um, I, I think do just have it be like a big fun party with your friends. That's like, you know, I don't know, like trying to impress anyone is, is probably again, like that ego or needing it to be perfect because it is just one day. And then I think people get there and then they're like, Oh, it's just another day, you know? So really focus on what makes it fun. My cousin had an amazing band at her party and it was super fun. So I uh, second what Doug says about an amazing band, open bar, amazing band. That's wanna... it's funny because I think of the best weddings I went to. It was the party factor that made it that made it a good time. So solve for party. I think that could be this crew of people too. <laughs> that might, might have something to do with who we are, maybe as well. All right, uh, oh gee, it's the big moment. Is Len gonna crawl one point back, or are you gonna tie him right now and send this to a tiebreaker? I, I I just I just don't know based on this list. I've got two that I'm thinking of. Um, so I guess one could be my tie break nut one. I, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna say pets. Some people spend a lot of money on pets. I don't know. It seems it seems like pets are expensive. Do pets make the list? To tie, do pets make the list? Bum, bum, bum. Ah, son of a pets not on the my list. My other one was clothing. You don't get to say that clothing also well, it's not over. on the list. Len won. Yes, so. yes. Len, this by the a, way, I'm hey, call it. this hey, is let's a do this. stupid list. Len Penzo is our winner. I think it's the first time I've ever won a game show. I, think I was just thinking is. that. I think it's the first time I've ever won. It's usually, you know, uh, OG or Paula usually uh, just... Just do well on these. Yeah, Paula, how many of the game shows have you done? Is this your first game show? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, I can't remember, Len, you ever winning. Usually I, I you know, get Paulette's I, I luck, so maybe maybe Paulette's picking up your luck here. <laughs> uh, uh, the other four, are you ready to groan at a couple of these? A couple of them are expensive, and I can see them. Your utility bills over your life, and you can lower the cost of your utility bills. Vacations over your life are mm. also a lot end up being a lot of money funerals it was number 10 on the list okay, that utility one's... bills they had at three vacations at four 10 is funerals number six i completely disagree don't get me wrong i think this is expensive but it's because of all the other stuff number six on this list was paying off debt which is just everything yeah just which is everything. just everything like interest yes yeah, I mean, I, was, I, don't. I, I actually thought about interest, but I'm like, well, that's kind of incorporated in all these other answers. Yeah. Well, that's Car what I thought, payments too. And mortgages yeah, was... and housing costs. Yes. This Dumb. this list uh, is from PocketYourDollars.com. We'll link to it in the show notes. But I think uh, you clearly, handle I think... funerals the same way as you, you handle weddings. Just have an open bar and a sweet band. <laughs> just, just have a big party. <laughs> yeah. That would you know, be pretty my... epic, wouldn't it? Yeah, when my father-in-law died, uh, uh, I thought my mother-in-law did something very great. She, th th they had no real ceremony when he passed away, and they waited a few months, and then they did. They had a they they had a ceremony where uh, people got up and told stories about him, mm -hmm. and it was literally just an hour about these great stories. And and by that time, a lot of the grieving was done, mm -hmm. and it was so magical to spending time. Uh, you know, reminiscing about what a great human being it was. It was super, super cool. So I'm okay. with you, Doug. Let's that's, that is my, while dying is a very, you know, sad event to have happen. The fact that we pause our life for a minute and just remember all the good things about this person, I think is a pretty, just pretty get cool a thing. sick band. That's what Doug wants on his tombstone. <laughs> sick band. <laughs> Just get a sick band. A sick band. All right, that's going to do logo it. logo right on the tombstone. 
<laughs> that's going to do it for today. I loved all of your suggestions. I think we should have made this top 10 list. Ours was better. But let's see what's going on. Speaking of better, let's find out what better things you guys are doing than just hanging out with us doing game shows. Mr. Penzo, what's happening at LenPenzo.com? You know what? Just because OG brought it up, I am going to uh, uh, post today uh, uh, the uh, water challenge that we did many years so this is a this is something ah. that happened a few years ago but just for the because i'll be honest I, i'm gonna have to go back and look and see what the results were but i'm pretty sure uh I, if i remember correctly they couldn't tell the difference between the filtered refrigerated water and the bottled well, maybe i'm wrong it's been a while i'm gonna have to go back and and look at pull that back up and look at it but i'm gonna post that at lempenzo.com please in, so my kids in, do it. in detroit i was i was with og that I, I really couldn't tell much of the difference. Texarkana. <laughs> you, well, you one of them not, glows. <laughs> right. You do not drink out of your sink in Texarkana <laughs> unless, yeah, you're hoping to end your life early. Uh, Paulette Perhatch, what's going on with you hey. right now? Shots fired. Pitching stories about off-roading and, um, you know, and... Uh, working on uh, a trip to uh, to oh. Seattle, so and then just getting ready for summer and pitching and uh, you know uh, coaching writers having and fun th- doing that. I mean, I have one student who's in her third round with me, and I've been going through her entire memoir with her, and it's been that's awesome. fantastic. And if somebody wants coaching, how do they find you? That writer dot com. Awesome. And oh, gee, what do you got going on this weekend besides celebrating St. Patrick's Day? I am not celebrating St. Patrick's Day, uh, unfortunately, or the basketball tournament, which is going on, too. Uh, I am in uh, Baltimore for a little after school activity. Ah, it has started well. already. Hello, so, Baltimore. You're in Baltimore, Baltimore. I'm in Cincinnati. We're all over the place. We just we... finished uh, spring break. So it was a quick trip, um, a little spring break trip and then Baltimore and. So. We will link to uh, uh, Paulette's coaching and we'll link to lenpenzo.com and water testing on our show notes page at stackingbenjamins.com. Doug, finish this off for us, man. What should we have learned today? Well, Joe, here's what everybody should have learned. First, take some advice from our panel. Lowering expenses, start with housing, transportation, and groceries, and you're on the right track. <laughs> and groceries didn't even make the list. <laughs> didn't even make the list. <laughs> Oops, who writes these things? <laughs> Second, take a lesson from Paulette. Sometimes it's your ego driving your expenses. Check that ego at the front door of your 5,000 square foot house and go buy a 94 Camry. But the big lesson? Apparently, permanent hair dye lasts longer than a day. Looks like I'll be celebrating St. Patrick's Day through Easter. Luckily, though, I don't think anybody can see the green through my pants. What? The 70s are coming back in style. Somebody's got a weird uh, background noise. I think it's Doug. I hear that. I think it's me. It's a vacuum cleaner. Uh, no, it's just that when I start Audacity, my mic level goes to 110. It did just so, go away. Mute, <laughs> mute for a second, Len. Okay. Nope, it's Doug. Yeah, I'm at five now. I, I cranked it back to five. <laughs> you want it? Yeah, I didn't hear it when it was just Paulette and I. No, you're good. You're fine. Let's go. Okay. Just let's make sure that we point out that it's Doug. <laughs> yeah, that was funny. As long as, long as we... If you hear something annoying, it's Doug. problems you may be experiencing in life, it's Doug. It's probably Doug. It's a verb, right? I got dugged. <laughs>